This, uh, this unit here is for analysing and testing uh, bacteria uh, in the sea. And what we can do with this is uh, we can make electricity from the bacteria. There's a membrane across here and the bacteria react and actually create electricity. And the Americans are using this right now in the bottom of the ocean. They've sunk them and are using them for listening to submarines. It provides them with an unlimited supply of electricity. They never have to come back and change the batteries. It will just keep on making electricity forever because the sea never runs out of bacteria. If you're doing very fine distillations, uh, like suppose you have two compounds which are extremely close in boiling point, mm -hmm. then you want a column with a high theoretical plate so that something which has almost got the same boiling point will actually separate. And that's what this thing does. Uh, so did a good job for ICI and separated some very close compounds, so the purifier zirconia. I use uh, propane oxygen because it's a very versatile flame, it's nice and hot. I can also, apart from working with glass, this is a piece of quartz which has 2,000 degrees there. I'm not allowed to use uh, mercury in a lot of the labs anymore, and this is a bubbler I'm playing around with at the moment uh, for schlenk work. I've got a, I put a ball valve in here, I've got a spring in it. Now, if we were to pressurise that at 100 psi, now, you wouldn't run nitrogen at 100 psi, but this glass is designed to safely work with 100 in case something goes wrong, but this here will probably lift at around about 15 pound per square inch, about one atmosphere that should lift up. So when I put this on, oh yeah. So that's giving us a safety margin. So if something goes wrong with the line, if your house nitrogen shoots up to quite a high pressure, uh, this will protect all the glassware from getting high pressure. And something that I designed. Um, just the other day. Also I put a very fine cookery down here because one of the problems with oil bubblers is you can easily get sucked back when you get a negative pressure. With mercury you don't. With mercury you make a column that's 760 long and that is the length of uh, a vacuum yeah. and it's a good indication of where you are with with vacuum. It's a real tool for a person using a slink line but well, when you can't use it, you've got to go to oil, and so by putting a fine cookery on here, it takes a long time for the oil to suck back, so it gives the operator plenty of time to realise what's happening and start turning things off. So that was just made the other day. What I'm using on this lathe is uh, carbon tools, because carbon doesn't stick to glass when the glass is hot. When the glass gets hot, it's quite sticky. Um, the hotter it gets, it can get a viscosity more like honey when it gets very, very hot. Uh, I had to make a large, uh, a complete uh, bioreactor system for um, some people that were making methane from pig manure. Um, that's probably the most involved thing I've made uh, in the last year. It's not so much extremely complex as I was working with quite large vessels and when you're working with big glass vessels, putting lots of side arms and uh, ports on, uh, you've got to be very careful to keep the glass warm otherwise it could break at any time. So this is uh, your ordinary window glass. What I did was, now this has got a high sodium content in the glass. It's soda lime. So what I did was I made the nail up 
out of window glass and then I put it in a bath of potassium nitrate at 400 degrees for a couple of hours. And what happens is the potassium ions, which are slightly bigger than the sodium ions, muscled in on the surface. That puts the surface under quite a lot of compression. Glass always breaks from tension, not compression. And I was able to hammer that nail through into that lump of wood. Now they used to make pipettes using the same process, using window glass and toughening the window glass pipette tip with this process. And you could bounce your pipette on the floor and catch it. It wouldn't break. But they stopped making them. I think they weren't, uh, they weren't selling enough pipettes. The interesting things I got to do recently was a lady wanted to feed mosquitoes uh, for malaria. And so she puts a bit of parafilm over this glassware and that'll have an inlet and outlet to keep everything at 37 degrees, which the mosquito likes. And the mosquitoes will come and feed on the parafilm here. Actually, it's inverted like that. So there's blood in here, parafilm across here, and the mosquitoes are feeding on the blood, which has got certain chemicals in it and, and antibodies and all sorts of things, so they can play around trying to defeat malaria. So, we get quite a variety of uh, work. It's quite nice coming to work and getting this in the So what I did with this is I dropped, heated up window glass and dropped it into a bucket of water. Mm. Can you see that there's a little bubble in there? You hold it. Mm. Bearing oh, in mind it could explode at any moment. Oh, okay. Oh. Put my camera between the bulb and my face. <laughs> hmm. Can you get the bubble there? Not quite, because the camera doesn't focus really well. It's not a very good camera. If I put it further away, that's okay. Anyway, there's a bubble there, and the bubble is vacuum, perfect vacuum, because what's happened is it's ran out of volume. It's, it's expanded, dropped into the bucket of hot water, chilled on the outside can't move on the outside anymore, it's still molten on the inside, it's cooling and contracting. And the whole thing was, it's, it's a bigger volume than what it was originally because of the heat, and so there's a vacuum, a little air bubble of vacuum in there. And this was popular in the time of Charles I. It was brought back from Europe by a man called Prince Rupert, who sounds a bit sissy, but is actually a really tough guy and fought all of Charles's wars for him in Europe. And these became a toy for children in high places. They'd get a bottle of these and they'd play with them. The glass is very strong, you can hit it with a hammer and it won't break. But if you break the tail, this glass is so toughened, it'll shatter. Have you ever seen those naughty boys that break car side windows or tram stops where the glass breaks into tiny little fragments? Mm. That's toughened glass. This is super toughened glass. When this breaks, it breaks into not pieces of glass that big, it breaks down into sand. Would you like to break it? It hurts a little bit, but I'll break it for the camera. It's oh goodness, stink. okay, hang on. <laughs> Alright, let's okay, make I'm sure I've got... I'm going to wrap my fingers around it, Yeah. because otherwise it's going to fly all over the place. So that's broken. And also, the interesting thing is it breaks faster than the speed of sound. You don't get a sonic boom. But <laughs> <laughs> I got a bit of a boom in my fingers, I can tell you. It breaks quite sharp. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> it's an interesting product, isn't it? <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs>